Hello everyone, welcome to our webinar, Chile Investors and Connectors. Uh, we are here today with some awesome guests from uh, Chile and are going to speak with us about the startup ecosystem in Chile and uh, how has it evolved in the last year, uh, in the last years. Chile is one of the most mature markets in Latin America regarding startups. Have an amazing program as Startup Chile. The government is also helping uh, you know, through other organizations as Corfo and some other private institutions are also helping the startup ecosystem in Chile, not just the local startup ecosystem but also international startups. So welcome today to this webinar. If you have any questions or comments, please uh, send us an email to contact at latamstartups.biz or uh, to the hashtag latamstartups. And then when we, we finish the webinar, we can also, you know, uh, answer your questions, any that you have. Now today, I'm going to present our guest today. Uh, we're going to start with Angeles Navarro. She is from Startup Chile. Uh, she's uh, basically right now going to talk with us about the program and some other questions we have around. We have also David Albo from NXTP Labs. NXTP is one of the biggest accelerators that we have in Latin America and currently he is, uh, he's running the, the office in Chile. We have uh, Marcus Schreger from uh, Chile Angels um, um, from uh, another consulting company that he has also in Chile helping startups uh, to scale and to do uh, research and development. And uh, we are going to have probably soon Tadashi Takao come He's having some troubles to enter to this link right now. Uh, hopefully, we are going to talk with him as well in a few minutes. Uh, but we wanted to start with you guys uh, right now uh, this webinar. So uh, here we have some questions about how how is the startup ecosystem and how is evolving and and how you guys are supporting. So our first question is, how did you describe the startup ecosystem in Chile? Uh, what are the main features? And I'd like to start with Angelis. Uh, thank you so much, Miriam, for, for this invitation. Hello to everyone. Um, well, I will say that uh, in Chile we have a solid uh, ecosystem, uh, entrepreneurial ecosystem. There are different actors and institutions working together. And I would like to highlight the, like, the synergy that we, that we have with each other. We are very well connected with uh, working all together to improve the the ecosystem that have been developing for the for the last couple of years. Um, so of course we still need to to improve things, but I would say that so far it has been well developed and 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 that we work together different institutions, uh, universities, VCs, um, accelerators, etc. In so to um, like to work together to, to improve the, the ecosystem that we have in Chile. Sounds good. Thank you, Angeles. And now the same question to David. Uh, from your pers perspective, from NXTP Labs, uh, what do you think about the ecosystem? How do you describe the ecosystem in Chile? Well, first of all, Miriam, thank you for the, for the invitation. I'm uh, really excited to be here. So, for your question, I, I believe we have a, a really growing ecosystem here in Chile. Um, it's, it's growing really fast. We have a lot of great startups uh, doing a great job. Uh, we have a little lack of VCs. So, we're, we're all the institutions, as Angela said, we're working together to, to grow this ecosystem. And we know we, we, we don't have VC, too many VCs here in Chile. And uh, also, this, this is ecosystem is, is, is strongly supported by Corfo. So that's one thing you, you should know about Chile. Corfo is supporting every stage uh, of, of the startups uh, through incubators, VCs, uh, angel investors, and, and universities. So, so we have a strong new system supported by Corfo. Sounds good, David. Thank you so much. 
Uh, now, Marcus, uh, you're coming from an international perspective uh, to Chile. So you have been in other markets. You have been also in Brazil and, uh, you know, in Europe. And um, uh, we'd like to know from your perspective, how did you describe the startup ecosystem in Chile? Yeah, first of all, also thank you, Miriam, for the opportunity to participate. Um, I can, on the one hand, echo what Angeles and what David already outlined. Um, I think a very solid um, and continuously growing ecosystem, specifically when I when we think about the seed stage. Um, <clears throat> what, uh, what I see um, also as positive, it's a lot of support currently from a government perspective. Probably later on we might speak about some of the challenges. It also bring, comes with some, some challenges, um, specifically when you think about the internationalization of, of, of startups. Um, what uh, what uh, probably is an, is an area where I see challenges for the startups is that once the seed stage is leaving or uh, is, is, uh, is finished, once the startups are coming out of a seed stage, the infrastructure to support the next step, we mentioned the venture capitalists, we, mention, uh, we, we have to mention also um, accelerators which look more for early stage support and for internationalization with an international network. Those are areas which are in its absolute infancy at the moment. On the other hand, um, I have to say that Corfo has uh, started to look at that. I had a meeting yesterday with Corfo talking about that specific subject. Um, there is uh, one initiative at the moment ongoing to launch uh, several, um, let's say, early stage um, funds. I don't want to say venture capital funds because they might be too small to be called real venture capital funds, but supporting funds in the in the early stage. Um, that is an initiative which is started, and there are other uh, thoughts to support that specific gap. Um, and the international network, I think, is very important um, because uh, Chile is a small country with limited, um, uh, 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 let's say, markets. Um, so looking into Latin America, and I think here NXT Labs is one good example, um, uh, but also looking into other markets, um, not only the United States. Uh, one of my startups, for example, a very good market would be in New Zealand, um, uh, but definitely building that international network is a, is a very critical aspect uh, for, for the future success of the, of the ecosystem. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, Marcus. Uh, I'd like to introduce uh, Tadashi Takaoka. Uh, he just uh, joined us today. He's from Corfo. Hey, Tadashi. Hi, Miriam. How are you? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you very well. There is another, a lot of noise behind. So, oh, really? Have Oh, microphones? No, no, I, I uh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm alone in a room with no <laughs> noise, so I don't know which, what noise is is going on. The rest, oh. the rest. Oh, okay. Now, now it's here. I can hear clear. Thank you. Oh, perfect. <laughs> hey, Tadashi, thank you so much for coming to the, to the webinar, and I like to, uh, you know, ask you the first first question, Tadashi. Uh, by the way, I I said some words at the beginning, but Tadashi is uh, director of entrepreneurship at Corfo. It's one of the uh, government institutions that are helping uh, startups in uh, Chile. So our first question is a very basic question: is about how did you describe this startup ecosystem in Chile? What are the main features? Yeah. Well, first of all, thank you for the invitation, Miriam. Uh, well, the the startup uh, the startup concept in Chile has evolved very fast. I will say that it was first installed in 2010 with the with the construction of Startup Chile. Angeles um, will talk a little bit about that. Uh, and in this first wave was about the culture to to have people that wanted to solve new problems. Uh, uh, you have people that wanted to uh, create solutions that were more technological that had to do with innovation. And the most important part was to create the opportunity for people who were uh, being employed to become self-employed to uh, create solutions that will be uh, global or will be have worldwide impact. So the first part of the startup concept was to 
to create the Chilean concept of a startup? What kind of 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 um, conditions will have? What kind of characteristic will have the entrepreneurship in, in Chile? Because Latin America has different rules than in North America in terms of of, of growth, in terms of of size. Uh, so the first part was to make that definition. I will say that. Right now, we're living a second wave of startups. Uh, the first wave was uh, where young young people coming out of universities, uh, becoming entrepreneurs for the wrong reasons, like they wanted to become millionaires or they wanted to uh, they didn't want to have a boss. So a lot of them failed because they didn't have the training. Uh, right now, we're in a second wave where we're, we're working with sophistication. Uh, part of the of the new problems that we have, like this this concept that Marcus was talking just uh, uh, just recently about, uh, how this gap in the in the early stage investment part uh, is because some of them evolved. So uh, startups right now are becoming very technological. They're 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 working with a little bit of R and D, and they're focusing uh, on a strategic markets, which is very important because, of course, we all need uh, these B two C models with uh, social networks, which which is cool. But uh, as a country, we have different markets that are very solid, and if we can solve those problems, will put us in the in the worldwide stage. So. A lot of startups are appearing to solve problems in mining, in 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 in, in, in sustainability, in terms of, of forestry, logistics, different concepts that are making uh, more sophisticated the startups taking advantage of the hard training that engineers and other and other professionals have here in Chile to create new companies. So I will say right now startups are becoming uh, are having this little turn to the B two B model. Uh, to solve these strategic problems and to make better connections with, with the industry, which is, is, is making a space for open innovation. Sounds good. Thank you so much, Tadashi. Um, I have a second question, and actually this question is more for the government. So uh, if we all know that Chile has been leading the region for years in the tech sector, uh, especially for, for startups. And uh, in Latin America, uh, Startup Chile is very well known. You know, Corfo is very well known. In the world, you know, many, many startups know about the program uh, that you guys have in Chile. Now, uh, what are those next steps that uh, you need to uh, have in Chile to improve the current uh, startup ecosystem? So, I will start with Tadashi and then um, Angeles. Uh, well, like I was saying, I, I will say that the first part is sophistication, trying to to compete with what we have as as capacities. For example, uh, we have uh, developed new instruments that connect big companies with with big problems, uh, with the startups that are in idea phase and are trying to create uh, new solutions through new innovation. Uh, and that's very important because in innovation, the most important part is the problem, is the challenge. The bigger, the better. So the first part is to create this, this sophistication in terms of new solutions. The second part is uh, something that it was already taken the the concept of creating this early stage investment in in, in Chile the numbers are different in, in in Silicon Valley when you talk about seed capital you talk about until 100 uh, 500k in Chile I will say that is like 200k and an early stage is 200k to 1 million dollar uh, so that's the part that we're trying to to create new investment funds to to attract new people uh, to attract new new solutions for example crowdfunding crowdfunding has become very strong in chile um, uh, I, I think we have this this startup uh, by itself is a startup called brota who is the who gives equity of companies uh, again uh, investment from from a lot of people so it's like a so, so is is a lot of people investing in companies, and I think it's the it's the most dynamic crowdfunding uh, against equity that we, we have in Latin America. So there are new solutions for this part, and that's something that we want to encourage. And the th third concept I will say is about uh, we're working in a project called the Startup Journey, which is a methodology to 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 train and certificate the startups through through the connection with the ecosystem. So what is going to happen right now is that 
comp startups are going to display from August. They're going to go to a platform where they can uh, self-evaluate the, the the level that they have in innovation or in the road of entrepreneurship, the curve of money that everyone knows, uh, and and they're going to receive. Uh, a, a, uh, valuation of the company, the level where they are, and what kind of training they should have. For example, a company who is in level three will probably ha need to have a conversation with, with, with investors, will need to have a mentors, a director board, training for, for management, etc. So, and we're going to provide those services through pr providers in all the regions in Chile. So, the third part is about training. It's about having people that is prepared to take the next step to understand where they are and to and to raise the level and to raise the the chance of success of the big company so those will be the three points uh, in 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 in, in or, or next challenges sophistication creating this investment around in, in the early stage part and uh, having this support through the startup journey okay thank you so much tadashi uh, now, Angela, uh, Angeles, uh, from your perspective in Startup Chile, you guys have, doing, uh, have done an awesome job uh, helping in startups, international startups, local startups now, um, also, you know, helping uh, women in the startup sector. What are the next steps for a Startup Chile in the future to uh, um, improve the startup ecosystem in, in, in Chile? Yeah, so uh, there are different kind of things that we ha uh, have been doing and, and that we are focused now. Um, in terms, well, David, Tadashi, and, and also Marcus were mentioning about the the, the, the lags that, that we need to improve, like, or the things that um, are not working so well right now in the ecosystem. So when Startup Tiro was born, uh, it generates like a, a huge deal flow of startups. So we have supported a, a lot of startups, as Tadashi say, uh, we still need to uh, train them and, and so they can um, succeed. But um, for our perspective, there are different things that we are working on to improve the, 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 the entrepreneurial ecosystem. So first of all, uh, we have attracted a lot of uh, a lot of people, a lot of entrepreneurs to Chile. Um, but now, now we need to to retain those talented entrepreneurs to stay in Chile uh, and to like have an impact in the ecosystem. Um, so we are giving them some in incentives for them to scale from Chile. Um, and and in, in that term, we need to improve uh, the uh, how they access the market and the investors. So uh, we have been mentioning that that we need to have more uh, VCs or even maybe uh, uh, started having uh, VCs. So um, in that sense, Startup TV has, has been creating the, the club of, you know, of investors. So there are a lot of people that wants to, to for example, companies that want to incorporate um, innovation in their businesses, but they don't know how to do it. Uh, so we are connecting startups with companies so they can uh, work together easier to, so we are approaching companies from first of all um, so that also uh, they can um, it's uh, at the end it's kind of an incentive for the startups to to be in Chile and to scale from Chile if they have um, clients or potential investors I don't know so first of all we are working very close with with companies uh, so they can incorporate innovation and we can teach them on how to do that. From another perspe perspective, we are working with investors or with people that have money and don't know how to invest. Um, so we can, um, we're focused on, on training them on how they can invest in startups. Um, so we created this club of, of investors, uh, as I mentioned, and with all the things, also we are working close with with mentors, so that we, we can give them training, and with all these uh, areas or, uh, or different points that we are working on, um, we are trying at the end to have a better ecosystem in Chile, so our entrepreneurs can uh, be uh, or have more tools uh, to grow here and to scale from 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 Chile. So yeah, I will say that's uh, the, the three main things that we need to improve. 
like uh, retain talent uh, by training them, and at the end connect them with companies, investors, and mentors. Thank you, Angeles. So um, that's that's really you know the su super good plans for for the future from the government supporting um, the startups in in Chile. So now we go to the third question, and this is uh, what are the main players in the startup ecosystem in Chile? Those that you recommend to international startups to connect. So let's start with David. Uh, what are the, the the main players that you may recommend to any international startup uh, that is going to Chile? So, obviously, NXTB Labs. That's that's uh, a main player that you should connect to. Um, we're we're working here to basically uh, create um, acceleration programs to connect startups with corporations and uh, big enterprises so they they can have new clients and success you know the the startups here in Chile or in Latin America they they only achieve success by selling you know by having revenues it's really hard for a company here in Chile or in Latin America to grow without without selling without having any revenue because VCs and 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 seed stage uh, uh, funds they don't invest in in a lot of companies that that have like users and and stuff like that. So NXTP obviously for for their acceleration programs, uh, Corfo obviously uh, that's one institution you have to know. You have to know everything about them. Every every grant that they ha that they have available, uh, you have to know them. Um, obviously, if you come to Chile, you have to apply to start up Chile. That's one. Must think you you have to do that. Obviously, if you're coming from outside, you have to come uh, to start up Chile first. And uh, the other main player that I would say that we have here is uh, incubators, because th they have a lot of money from Corfo, and they're they're giving to uh, those those monies to those grants to the to the startups that are you know maybe a later stage that just the idea. So. I, I will say NXTB Labs, Corfo, Startup Chile, and Incubators. That are the main players here in Chile. And as ev everyone has said, I, I should be telling you about the VCs. You know? I don't know if you're there, Miriam. Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> I'm okay. just uh, take out the video because, uh, you know, internet connection. But I'm here. <laughs> it's here. So I should be telling you about the VCs, but they're not the main players here. We're really working hard to have better engine investors, uh, more engine investors, more VCs. But it's, it's really a, 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 it's really difficult, and we're trying hard to to so they they can be main players here in Chile. Sounds good. Yeah, VCs is also you know is 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 kind of a, a problem for the the whole region. Is uh, this is also happening in. In Colombia and Mexico and other places, so this is something that we really need to improve. Uh, but you know, as we are growing as an ecosystem in general, so uh, that's coming after, I guess. Uh, but talking about VCs and investors, Marcus. <laughs> so, do you have any extra connections that do you think uh, any international startup uh, should uh, make when they are going to Chile? Yeah, uh, I think uh, David mentioned most of the the ones which are really well established and connected in uh, in Chile. However, um, we will speak later on about the importance of network and getting to know people in Chile uh, and in Latin America. Uh, we all know uh, networks are important in the world, but uh, business here in in Latin America um, goes via people, goes via people you know and. So therefore, I would definitely recommend that you also get engaged or minimum get to know and get uh, to know some people who are in the more supporting networks uh, like um, uh, angel networks like Chile Global Angels, that Neo. Um, these are good organizations which are not just looking at um, at investing or investment opportunities, but in those networks there are a lot of people 
who are um, spending time with startups on pro bono basis, on coaching basis, um, and who help also with introductions in in uh, in other uh, other areas. Um, another another organization which I can recommend uh, international startups always dependent of course on the focus of the startup but if there is a startup which is more related to the mining industry or is more related to the salmon industry uh, uh, should definitely get connected with Fundación Chile as well as with the um, with some of the centers of excellence like UC Davis Chile which is focused more on the agriculture side. Um, uh, Fraunhofer, which is focused on biotech, um, uh, so those are also, um, I think, specifically for international startups, also good examples that international companies are or organizations are coming to Chile and driving success. Perfect. And and talking about that part of angel investment, uh, we would like to know, you know, for international startup perspective. What is the main difference that you see between angel investment in compared with the region and also with the um, uh, with North America? Um, uh, let's start with Marcos and then we go with Tadashi and then David. Okay, um, you know I would say there are there are many differences, but the main difference uh, is that uh, the angel investment here in Chile is still in its infancy. Everybody is learning. Um, uh, availability of funds in the angel networks um, uh, is probably not always the problem. The problem is more the 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 level of risk taking and the level of understanding. Um, the technologies or the solutions which are offered. Um, that means most of the angel investors here in Chile are not um, past entrepreneurs. These are not people who have gone through the cycles of entrepreneurship and had big successes or big, big exits and based on that they then go into angel investment but these are people who have uh, have a certain level of interest in the, in the uh, entrepreneurship ecosystem, have interest in finding alternatives for investments but um, are usually um, very very conservative from an investment perspective, very conservative when it comes to valuation uh, um, and um, and also um, it's probably not yet a mature angel, or it is not an, a mature angel investment network where each angel also has the capacity to help, specifically helping in in domain knowledge Many angel investors have experience in the management of companies, of structuring companies, etc. But really, domain knowledge uh, in specific areas is limited. So these are some of the the, the main differences um, in its infancy, but a growing interest um, and a growing participation. Um, but uh, still, a lot of work to be done. And they all have recognized that they're all working on different programs to improve. Okay, sounds good. Tadashi, um, we know that Corfo has also trying to improve a lot the uh, um, VC sector, investment sector. Uh, how, how do you think? Uh, what, what do you think about the angel investment sector, in Chile? Well, I I think that it is like I said before. We have all all the methodology, all the all the ideas, all the concepts that came to Chile were coming from Silicon Valley. There, there were the books were coming from Silicon Valley. The 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 methodology, the structure, the algorithm were coming from Silicon Valley, and of course the 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 basis of that were uh, culturally were from Silicon Valley, and that's very different from what we have here. One of the first thing that you will notice in in Latin America is that Investors, VC players, don't have don't have someone to sell the company to. So, in Latin America, we're not having acquisitions yet, and that sets a lot about what are the conditions of the investment. Because, like David said before, uh, you won't find a place to to become invested be only because you have a lot of traction. Because when someone in, in, in the U.S. or in North America invests in traction, they know that some big company is going to come and is going to buy the company, and that's where the investor is going to have the money back. But in, in Latin America, that won't happen. So the only thing that you can seek for is a, is a, is, is, is a business model. It's something, is, you need to prove that you can sell as, as soon as you start. And that sets a very different strategy for what, you will see in other places. A second, 
a certain characteristic is that we don't have that many players in the BC uh, stage, so and some of them are very focused on mining or, or in, in real estate, so apps will have a, 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 a hard time trying to connect with them, uh, not because they don't have uh, great products, but because they, you don't have that many options. So you might have like six, seven players that can invest in you, and if you don't uh, seduce them, it's, it's, very hard to con it's very hard to continue, uh, and you might need to move to other places. But on the other hand, if you have some training, if, if you come from more developed uh, ecosystems, uh, like, like Canada, for example, uh, you might have the opposite. You might have a, a, a uh, a fast way to to become invested in Latin America because you have a different numbers because you have a global market, and that's something that certain uh, startups won't show when they they present in front of the of, of of an investor. So you might have certain leverage to to become invested uh, faster. Um, and on the other side, of course, we're trying to create this this new ecosystem, and and, and like Marcus was saying, that is is there is still a, a a teenager, a teenager, or, or there's still a, 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 a newborn uh, culture of investors who are learning. But on the other hand, we're also having this, this, we're creating this, this deal flow of companies that can be invested, and 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 we're attracting a lot of people to Chile. I have received like I don't know, ten mails from comp from investors from all over the world who want to come to Chile, they need to understand how to enter the country, and, and Corfo is investing in them. We invest in, in the in the VCs in terms of to, to operate the company and also to multiply the the the, the amount of the, of the fund from one to three times. So someone that comes with $10 million to invest in Chile will end up maybe with $40 million, which is very attractive. So we're creating more possibilities for, for the people. Um, uh, even though the, the the vision right now is is kind of grim, I will say that it's becoming very bright, very fast. Sounds good, Tash. Yeah, in in general terms, uh, for international startups that are uh, watching this webinar, uh, you gotta um, understand also that uh, the government plays a really high level of role in in the investment side. So that's why we we need to encourage you know more people actually to go and uh, to approach the government as well, you know just the, um, um, the the private investors that for sure you know they they should be there as well. But the government is is also pushing to to actually uh, invest in, in in startups, local and international startups. Now I would like to know uh, from David and Angelus. Uh, we are start with David. If you want to add something to the, this question to to this answer. I just agree with uh, Marcus and uh, and Tadashi that we have a lack a lack of acquisitions. So if you have you don't have acquisitions, you don't have uh, rich entrepreneurs that understand the ecosystem and how to invest and what to expect. So so that's one thing we 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 still don't have uh, good angel investors. We have a few. I see a lot of cap tables uh, from from my companies and other companies. There is a, like I would say like 50, uh, 50 angel investors, uh, but probably everybody, uh, everybody, it's it's like investing in, in people that they they trust. So maybe there's, there's a cousin or maybe there's an uncle. So there's there's no like professional angel investors, and I I believe we we have to expect. More acquisitions. We have we had a new acquisition like one one month ago, Chile Autos, uh, and we expect those entrepreneurs become angel investors and and show other people with money that they can be angel investors and make a lot of money doing that. So we still we still have that that thing that is is not working yet. Angeles, uh, would you like to add something to this question to this uh, this answer? and specific about investors? Uh, well, just um, that I agree with with, uh, with David as well, and I think it's something that's going to change uh, sooner or later. At the end, there's, there are good opportunities for the ones that are, are investing in startups. So uh, I think it's, some, it's 
we just need more time to show the market that uh, there are good opportunities and, and that it's a good business uh, to start um, uh, like working as an angel investor or a VC. Um, so maybe we need a, a more examples that as the one that um, that David mentioned and Ambrota is always also doing uh, uh, his part, this another part with crowdfunding. So more people. Uh, it's knowing about how to invest in startups, and at the end, I think it's something that will change sooner or later. At the end, yeah. That that's good. Uh, we are going to start the other question with you, Angeles. So, uh, um, what is the best way for international startups to connect with local clients or users to validate their business uh, idea in the market? Uh, what what will be that best way for them to start to connect with those clients and users? Yeah, so the best way I think for, for people that it's not from Chile, for example, uh, startups from Canada, they're the ones to connect with uh, with locals. Um, well, we have been I mentioned this before, but first of all, it's important uh, to to know that Corfo has a super important role in, in the in the startup ecosystem. Um, so it's always always good to approach Corfo first. Um, for the ones that don't know, Startup Chile it's a program that uh, belongs to Corfo. Uh, I'm Corfo as well. Um, and and also in, in terms of, um, I think it's it's a good uh, country to start uh, like adding clients and and introducing the business, especially in the in Latin America in general, because of um, like some asset that that Chile has in in terms of how easy it is to to incorporate technology, for example, compared with other Latin American countries, um, in, general, in general we have good um, Chileans in general have good access to smartphones and, and internet. So if you want to test um, your product, your your service, it's a it's a good comp uh, a good country to start in the region. Um, also, in terms of of uh, geography, like or and and regulation, since we are kind of uh, uh, isolated, I think that gives give us or give the potential startups to to test in a safe environment, and and also in terms of of taxes, for example, if you compare with uh, with the U.S. or or Europe, um, so I think it's a super good place to um, to start if you want to expand to Latin American region. Also, for example, for um, the stability of the country in terms of uh, economical and political stability, um, the cost of, of living if you compare with Europe or or um, or yeah, the U.S., Canada, etc., North America in general. Um, so I think it's it's a good place to start compared with other Latin American countries. Sounds good, Angelos. Um, David, uh, what do you think about that? How a startup can validate their business uh, trying to connect with customers or clients? How they should start? Um, I know that Angelos already said that with the government, we start with Carrefour, we start with the Startup Chile. There is any other ways that they can find also that special connection with customers or clients, uh, users? Yes, I, I believe there's two ways. Um, besides what Angeles said, uh, first you can do it the Marcus way. Uh, the, you have to be really nice and cool person, and to don't be embarrassed to say hello to everybody. So, to, to for you to grow a good network here and to validate your business, uh, you have to know people, like Marcus did. And the other way is um, to to partner with a lo local local founder. That knows the language and knows the idiosyncrasy. Uh, I don't know how to say it. Uh, how people, are, how business work in Chile. So, or you just partner with someone from Chile, or you do it the Marcus way and say hello to everybody. And you have to be a really nice and cool person. Sounds good. Uh, I don't know if Tadashi or Marcus would like to add something to that answer. From from my perspective, uh, first of all, thanks, David, for the for the for the positive words. <laughs> um, 
it's not the easiest way, I have to say. <laughs> um, but uh, but but it is for sure uh, a good way because uh, you learn through your mistakes, and you need to be open for for that learning. But it's clearly um, also a longer way. Um, but what I what I really think uh, is important to know, and what uh, what um, international startups should should really take to heart that when they come into into the country into Chile um, they they need to learn that the culture is different it's the same when we go to the US or somewhere else coming in and thinking we can do it the way we have done it in Brazil or we have done it in Germany or in the United States or anywhere else in the world it's not working so I think uh, a very critical element is this this um, a humbleness right from the beginning um, to and no matter through which organization and contact you go you need to have that humbleness of of, um, of understanding that not only the language is different but also the culture is different and you need to adapt yourself and listen and learn um, and and that is for me the, the key essence coming to Chile coming to any other uh, uh, country and, and region yeah. Sounds good. Tayashi, would you like to add something? Or you are okay with those yeah, answers? Yeah. No, yes, two small points. Uh, first of all, the Startup Chile has been uh, named a lot, but it has a clear advantage for someone that is a foreign entrep uh, entrepreneur. That is the only way that you will enter the country with a visa that the government will give you to, to work here for a year, so that sets sets a lot of advantage for someone that comes from a foreign country. And the second way is to enter through incubators. Uh, we have 11 incubators and accelerators in Chile that can give you not only the help to enter, but also money. They can give you until 200 k US dollars to to enter the country. I did that when I was the head of, of an accelerator here in Chile named Magical Startups, where we where we looked for teams in, and we made demo days in Buenos Aires, in in Argentina, and in, in Medellin, in Bogota, and we brought teams to Chile. We invest in them, and we help them to install themselves. So, some incubators ha have this way to connect you to 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 work as this this ambassador in the in the local uh, country, like Marcus and David were saying. Yes, you need someone to help you. To understand the local culture, and that's a very fast and good way to do it. So, Startup Chile is the best way, I will say, but also incubators and accelerators uh, like NXTB Labs, for example, will help you to do that. Thank you so much, Tadashi. Now, we are going to go with an interesting question is uh, about um, how you are going to, uh, what, what is that specific? Uh, word or term that will define the startup ecosystem in Chile. We were talking before uh, with Colombia and Peru uh, when, when it was the month uh, highlighting their ecosystems. And in Colombia it was about the talent. Uh, they, they were saying, you know, we are, we are not a country to start up here for international startups, but you can find the talent here. Uh, and for Peru, was, everything is, is there to be done. So uh, they, they are just really, really starting up. And find that their ecosystem is just ready to, to start many, many things. Uh, what is this, that specific word in one sentence that you will say this is what uh, the Chilean startup is giving to the startup ecosystem in Latin America that is defining us? Um, I'm going to start with Tadashi. I will say, or, or phrase is, do it the Marcus way. No, just kidding, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, just kidding. The, our, our, our phrase is, is, you will have a lot of support, uh, not only from the government, the, but also from the people. The ecosystem is becoming uh, developed very fast. Uh, and we have, uh, we have learned different ways in Chile from what can work in Latin America. So I will say you will be supported if you come to Chile. Sounds good. Uh, Angeles, what do you think? What is that specific word or sentence that will define the ecosystem? Um, yeah, so the, the main like asset that, that or the most valuable thing that, that our start, uh, startup ecosystem has here, have here um, I will say it's 
first of all, the, the, the number of, of the startups that we have, so it's a huge community, and at the end there, well, Marcus also mentioned the, the, import, the importance of, of the connections, and so I think it's, it's a huge community of people that you can approach, and from Chile, but also from abroad. So I think one of the most valuable assets of the startup ecosystem is um, how well connected if, uh, for example, if you are part of a startup Tile or, or part of an incubator in Tile or if you receive fund, funds from Corfo, at the end you will uh, belong to a community of people, uh, many startups that are working maybe in different industries but facing as, as entrepreneurs the, the same challenges. Um, so I will say that's one of the most important assets of, of, of the startup ecosystem. And in terms of a little bit more still as a country, um, I think it's it's a very good place. I, I already mentioned it, but it's a very good place to, to test and validate. Um, so it, that's also one of our assets. Be because of, of so, course, because of all the things that I mentioned be before. So, yeah, sounds good. Thank you so much, Angel. Now, yeah. David, uh, what is that word? The word, uh, the sentence that you think that, uh, defines the ecosystem the Chilean ecosystem in Latin America. Okay, so as we, the, the ecosystem in Chile, were conceived by Corfo and uh, growth by Startup Chile, we really welcome the foreigners uh, to the ecosystem. And that's, that I believe, uh, we have, a, like Tadashi said, we have a lot of support from the ideas to to the scale uh, stage of the startup, and uh, and our economy is really is really healthy, so it's it's a really good place for B two B companies also. Thank you, David. Now coming in from uh, Marcus Way. <laughs> Marcus, <laughs> what is that? No, what I... is that a specific word or sentence that you think defines the ecosystem in Chile? To do it the Marcus way, you probably need to come from a <laughs> from a from another career instead of just being a startup. Um, so uh, no, I would definitely echo what uh, what Tadashi is saying. Um, the support infrastructure um, which you find and the openness of the people in Chile to receive foreigners and help um, is is extraordinary. I have been in many countries, but I have to say. Um, my way have, would have not been as easy, even though it was not the easy way, but it was, would have not been easy, uh, as easy if the infrastructure and the availability of resources, talented resources, and the willingness of the people would have not been, uh, would have not been there. Sounds good, Marcus. Thank you so much. So we are going to jump to the last question just before we have all the questions from the public. And uh, we have just uh, nine, nine minutes or so. So uh, our last question here for the webinar is, uh, what is the best advice you can give to an international startup thinking in expand business in Chile? So let's start with Marcos. Going back. Um, uh, from from my perspective, um, it is, um, it's probably a little bit re uh, repetitive, but um, it is, tapping into the resources which were explained. Um, that is, out of my perspective, the best way uh, to, to get accelerated in the country as fast as possible. That means get connected with Corfo, get connected with, with the infrastructure like Startup Chile, NXTP, uh, NXTP Labs, uh, and, and other uh, organizations as we mentioned them throughout the, the, the webinar. Uh, from my perspective, that is the best way, the fast way, because these organizations not only can uh, can tell you how they can help, but they also introduce you and guide you to the industries, uh, which uh, means opening doors, um, which help the startups uh, which are coming from abroad to test their solutions. Okay, sounds good. I imagine the others are going to have similar uh, answers, but if you have something to to add, uh, David, uh, David, uh, what will that say about an advice for an international startup? Really straightforward. You have to apply to Startup Chile. You have to, you can't lose any event uh, to, to, to do network. And obviously you can't, you have to see me. 
Sounds good. <laughs> so, Angeles, I think you agree with that, sir? <laughs> yes, of course. Uh, any other <laughs> advice that you can think? <laughs> no, my, any my other advice, advice you can think? My advice, yeah. of course, is to apply to Startup Chile. Um, if you are, you are selected, you are going to, well, you will have the working visa for, uh, for a year, so you can, could be studying Chile for, for a year working here. Um, we will get, uh, help you to get your ID card, open a, a bank account. Um, we will connect you with mentors, with investors, with the market. Um, we will provide you a co-working space so you can have an office for free. Uh, we have benefits so, so you can grow your startups uh, uh, thanks to the alliances with, that we have with different companies so I know the perks that, that we have. Uh, so of course my advice will be to apply to Startup Chile uh, and, and be part of, of, of the community and, and connect with the, with the ecosystem uh, in Chile. Sounds good. Uh, Tadashi, I imagine that you are going to agree with that. What happened with those startups that, for example, cannot be part of a Startup Chile for any reason uh, because they, they, were, they couldn't be part of the group or anything and they need still, they, they would like to go to Chile. What is your best advice for them? Apply again. No, just kidding. Everyone has talked about the, the how, but I think it's a very important why. Uh, and my, my advice is, if you're coming to Latin America, if you're thinking about Latin America, Brazil, Colombia, Peru, whatever, Chile is the place to start. And, and not, it's not something that I say uh, uh, lightly, because it's a place to start because it's, it's one of the countries with the with best support. It's one of the countries where you fi will find uh, the easiest way to find seed capitalists to come to Chile, but also it's a place that is the, one of the most connected in Latin America. Uh, and it's a place that it, it is, if you have a technology, Technology startup is a, a, you will find a lot of support in technical skills, uh, people doing the same, uh, markets being prepared to receive a solution that is more sophisticated. Uh, it's a it's a good place to 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 set the first step. I don't know if people know this, but Chile is one of the most uh, is one of the countries that has the the most agreement the most agreements with the rest of of, of the world because the stability of the economy in Chile makes them a very good players internationally. So if you want to go to Colombia, great, there are great players. Uh, if you want to go to Brazil, great, it's a great country, very big, 220 million uh, uh, population against the 17 million people in Chile. But this is a place to start. This is a place to start your company. In Chile, you can set your company in one day on internet. Is that fast? That how that adapt Chile is right now for for business. So I, I will say, yeah, of course, go to Startup Chile. If you don't, don't worry. Come to to the incubators, accelerators. Someone is going to receive you. But the most important part: set up a strategy that starts with Chile and help you move, uh, and will help you move to the rest faster. That's awesome, Tadashi. And it's important to understand also that Chile. Uh, may not have a big population, but it's part of the uh, Pacific Island countries, which in compared with uh, Brazil, you know, it's the same population actually. It's more than 200 million people and also has the same GDP in combined. So you can start in Chile and you can probably scale faster in the other uh, three countries that are part of the Pacific Island countries. Also, all of them have FTAs with uh, Canada and US and they have very, very low barriers uh, to enter to the, um, uh, you know, the general ecosystem. So we start with the questions right now. Uh, for those that just, uh, you know, started late to, to hear, the, the, to watch the webinar, just um, uh, send us the question to contact at latamstartups.biz or to the hashtag latamstartups. For this webinar, we're going to take just three questions because we don't have uh, much time right now, uh, probably two. <laughs> and uh, we are going to start with this question from an anonymous person who doesn't want to you know, be named right now. He's an investor and he would like to know what kind of startups uh, he can find in Chile and if it, the ICT sector is the most um, important sector at this point. Um, who wants to start with the answer? As, um, uh, Marcus. Okay, Marcus. Uh, as, 
as 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 I'm not not focusing on the IT, I'm I'm uh, I'm saying yes, of course, you know the it, it there was a big wave in the beginning which was focusing on the IT side on applications etc., which is pretty natural because it's also the area where you probably can get uh, the fastest returns. Um, uh, and also the, the the necessary infrastructure uh, is is uh, reduced. However, um, today uh, I would say you find more and more also science-based startups. Um, Fundación Chile has a very good track record, of course, um, but also um, other institutions are working on it um, to increase science-based startups. Universities are involved. Um, COFO is working with the universities to establish a hub, so there's more and more um, uh, uh, technology-based, science and technology-based in sustainability, solar technology, agriculture, uh, winery, etc., but also in biotechnology. There is an, an increasing uh, um, a wave of, of science-based startups, and the infrastructure related is still um, uh, in the beginning, but it's growing pretty fast. Okay, uh, David, do you wanted to add something? Yes, uh, I just I, I'm an investor too. I I invest in uh, in IT companies, early stage IT companies, and then I make a follow on on uh, on twenty percent of the next round, uh, reaching a, a maximum of one million dollar investment. And um, I will say to you, you, there's a lot of startups here. I have a huge pipeline. I would like to invest in three times I'm investing right now, but I just had I just need more VCs around me so we can co-invest in companies. There's a lot of opportunities that I'm losing uh, that I that I can do it faster. I, there's there's a lot of opportunities that comes through my eyes that I I, I can't see um, because because there's a lot of startups and there's a lot of VCs, so so I have a lot of work and and I invite you to come to Chile, and and work with me. So there's one thing that I want I would like to say about uh, Corfo. They have a, a new a new um, a grant for uh, it's not a grant. It's like um, they, they Corfo is co-investing with you in startups. They they if you put one million dollar they give you three more so you can invest four in companies and uh, and that's a huge opportunity for investors yeah. so so you have four to invest and, uh, and I, I will I promise you that you won't you won't um, feel like you don't have opportunities you will have a lot of opportunities you have started Chile and you have 11 incubators here in Chile working with uh, with uh, early stage companies to grow Perfect. Thank you so much, David. Uh, if somebody wants to uh, answer the angel investor here, just let me know. Uh, if not, we can move to the next question. And uh, Angeles, do you have a fan here in Toronto? An extra fan. So he's actually asking, you know, when are you coming to Toronto? And uh, if uh, you have any possibilities to show the startup program here in, uh, in Canada and uh, how they can connect with you. Uh, well, so um, we can, uh, yeah. If, if if you give me her or his email, uh, we can connect with uh, them. And since we support an, uh, entrepreneurs from all over the globe, uh, I can connect this entrepreneur with uh, with someone in Toronto. Uh, we do meetups and info sessions about startup Chile uh, all over the year. And, and we have good entrepreneurs that have been through the program um, and that are living in Toronto so uh, or in Canada in general. Um, so I can connect you with them and they, then you can know about Startup City from the first source, you know, people that have experienced it uh, or have lived the experience of, of Startup Chile. And of course they can, they can reach out um, through our social network or our email is contact at startuptile.org and we can arrange something so he can participate in these meetups or info sessions that we that we organize once in a while. Sounds good. Thank you so much. 
So uh, okay. mm -hmm. uh, we are right now, you know, um, finishing the webinar. Uh, we know that we have a couple of more questions, but we can add those questions to the emails. You know, we can respond to those questions. Uh, we're going to forward those uh, to our guests right now. And uh, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, remember, to any other question that you have, go to contact at latamestartups.biz or the hashtag latamestartups, and we're happy to answer your question. Now, Chile is in the spotlight this month, so we are putting the role of you about the startup ecosystem in Chile. So you're going to see this webinar, you know, you're going to see some other activities that we have uh, around uh, Chile, showing the startup ecosystem, this amazing startup ecosystem. Also reminding you that this October we have our Latin Startups Conference in Mexico. So this is the third edition and we are still missing from Chile, so we have to figure out that part. <laughs> but we have already people from Brazil and from Colombia and from Peru and from the other countries uh, join us that day in October 12 to 14. Uh, so any questions about the conference also you can contact us. Thank you so much to our guests and uh, please um, keep connected and uh, thank you for all the answers. Bye now. <laughs>